Welcome to Contextual Electronics. My name is Chris Gamble. Today is the last video in the Getting to Blinky 5.0 board assembly, uh, board construction period. We actually are going to be assembling in a later video. But today we're actually going to be doing uh, DRC checking, which is the making sure everything is kind of in the right uh, proportions and that it fits the, the rules that uh, PCB manufacturers ask you to conform to. Then we're also going to be checking uh, silk screen, adding new silk screen, making things look better. And finally, we're going to be putting things into a, a PCB assembly service, or manufacturing service. Sorry, I keep conflating the two. Assembly being when you actually stick parts on the board, manufacturing when you're actually, uh, the board itself is being made. So I have been made, that, made that mistake for many, many years now. Uh, let's take a look at the board as we left it off last time. All right, so we've got the board here. All of our traces are connected. Remember down here, we have zero unrouted traces. That's great. Uh, so let's, uh, let's go and look at the silk screen first things first. And so there's our silk screen. It's a little bit small, and we might want to move it around. And, and the reason you have silk screen in the first place, this is actually, let's take a look over here. This is what the silk screen looks like. It's going to be printed in white on these boards that we're going to get. And it's actually a printing process. It's very similar to, you know, like a silk process, silk screen process that might go into a t-shirt or something like that. It's basically just squeegeeing paint through, through a, a, a aperture, and then that it looks like this. Sometimes it's done like that, sometimes it's done with an actual printer these days. Depends on the process at the main PCB manufacturer. Um, but what we want to do is we want to modify this so it's easier to read. For one thing, I might just want to make this consistent here. So I just click this, drag it over here. That's fine. Uh, and we could also go and we can change, um, let's see what our design rules are at. Ah, so I'd actually made, sorry, I made these design rules a little bit bigger here. Uh, these were set at 1.0, so I had moved these to 1.2, 1.2 in a previous version of this video. So this, I, I, uh, like I said, I made the text and graphics. So we're in the board setup, which is up here. And I had changed this to a little bit bigger here. You see that all of these actually are the default one, one millimeter. And so I'd already changed that uh, to a larger size. But what I want to do now is I want to go and actually change all these. It, just changing it in the board setup doesn't actually do anything, right? So you know, even if I change this, let's say, let's make it something even bigger here, right? So if you make this 1.3, 1.3, uh, nothing actually changes, right? The size is actually the same of all these things. We need to actually go in and modify them individually. Either we have to go in and change them individually, or we can modify all of them at once. And we do that by saying footprint references, and then not set to specified. We could set to a specified value, but I'm going to just set it to the layer default, which is what I just changed there. And you see now these are bigger. So we can leave that there as well. We want to make sure that we're not going over top of any copper here, just because uh, if you do that, usually the PCB manufacturer will say, hey, I'm not going to print on top of copper. It uh, might interfere with your design. So, oops, don't want to move that. I just want to move just the reference. So I'm just clicking and dragging. You can also mouse over and hit M as long as nothing else is selected. So if I'm just selected anywhere on the board here and I mouse over hit M, it should move that reference. If you're near, if you're in between two things, it might try and say, hey, wait, what are you actually pointing at here? Like here, I think it might say, what are you trying to point at? Yeah, it's saying, are you pointing at the reference of the battery or the, the U1? I thought it was also going to grab the part itself, but in this case, it's just the, ref, uh, the reference itself. Let me move that up. And then these last two as well. Oops. All right, so um, great. So we've now got our, we take a look over at a 3D model. I think that this is great for, for making this a little bit more clear, easier to read. Uh, oh, actually, we have the backside as well. So we haven't actually looked at the backside yet. And you see this one actually is printed on the copper. So uh, let's do that. We can, again, I think I showed this in a previous video. We can do flip board view. And if we want to get, just see what's on the back now, we might select footprints back, oops, uh, back copper rather. So now we see the back copper. This is actually the orientation we would see it on the board. And then if we select back paste, or back uh, silk rather, now we see this is actually what it's talking about there. So we might want to just move this up. And you do need to do the flip board view because literally it's like what we're doing here where we're flipping the board around. Uh, KiCad's going to give you the reference point, you know, so when you're looking kind of through the board, which is what we were doing before, everything's going to be backwards, right? So if I do it, getting a flip board, this is going to be the front side. Now, this is the front side view of the board. We're just kind of looking at the layers on the back of it. And that can be a little confusing. I really do recommend looking at the 3D model. I think that that really helps things. All right, so next thing I want to do is I want to add, uh, let's add some text here. So I'm going to say getting to Blinky 5.0. You can say whatever you want here. This is, again, it's using the default width. And so we're just going to put this right here. Usually I put my name down here, made by Chris. And now if we go look at the 3D model, should update as well. 
All right, and that's great. So we've got uh, basically all the markings we might want to have here now. Um, and that makes things easier for assembly. Now, the one thing we don't have is, and you can see that these are actually, they're marked as visible, but usually they don't come through. So these are actually the values. And so normally I, uh, I make all these things invisible. And I, again, I'll show you that, that, uh, that dialog to change things. So I'm going to say footprint values, just select that. And then you see that this is saying, hey, some of these are visible, some of these aren't. I'm going to say make them all invisible. And now they're all gone there. Um, it's not necessarily that they're going to come through to the PCB process, but if they're showing in the diagram, they might come through. Now you also see there's other kind of markings in here as well. What are these things? Text C1. Uh, this is actually the fab layer. And so these are just, these actually do not usually get pushed through. And that's usually used if you're doing an assembly. Um, if you're doing an assembly, you might send a, the fab layer to the assembly house because you might not have everything marked in silkscreen, right? So say you had a component that you just couldn't fit the silkscreen next to, you, uh, they want to know which one's which, and this one would say, hey, this is C1 here, place the C1 here, and that's what the fab layer is good for. So we've got all these things now. Uh, one thing we didn't do yet is we need to do DRC. Now, DRC is basically checking against your design rules, which are here. So the design rules are something we set up early on. And remember I said that we were going to set these to point, uh, we have everything else set to 0.25, but our absolute minimum is 0.2, which is 7.87 mil mils, rather. Um, and uh, so basically, as long as everything is above that value, then it's going to be happy, including the distance from one thing to another. So let's just take a quick look at what that looks like real, uh, here. So if I start routing a trace here, you see two things. One, you see the, the thickness of the trace itself. That is actually 2.5 millimeters, 0.25 millimeters, rather. And then around it is 0.2 millimeters. That's defined in those design rules up in the board setup, right? If I wanted to change these, so let's go and change these real quick. I'm going to change these back for sure. So I'm going to say minimum, uh, we're going to say, actually not on the, we're going to leave the minimums the same, but we're actually going to change the net class. So the default net class is saying, hey, anytime I start drawing a new thing, what should it look like? Well, in the clearance, let's make the clearance now something much bigger, 0.4. Let's make this much bigger as well. Fine. OK. Now, if I start drawing, we should see, we see 0.55 is now set as the default. And what we see now is that it's a much thicker trace, and the amount that goes around it is now much bigger as well, basically saying, hey, you can't go any closer so it's basically saying, hey, you can't, you can't get this trace any closer to any of the pads that are not of the same net. And that's basically protecting you from uh, what will eventually be the, the traces, uh, sorry, the, the rules that the manufacturer is going to be using. And so, we're gonna, so I'm going to go switch all these back. Again, these are, these are the default net classes here. So our default was 0.2 millimeters. That was what uh, our clearance was, saying you can't get any closer than 0.2 two millimeters. Our track width is 0.25. That's how thick the, the default trace is going to be when we start drawing any trace. And again, if we go back here, you see now that's shrunk back down again. If I hit B, it actually should probably redraw all of these net, or sorry, the, uh, the ground plane and the power planes as well. Well, maybe that was set elsewhere. But these are actually, if you want to change those, you mouse over the edge of the, uh, the plane itself. There we go. And now we can actually change that here. You see our clearance uh, set much, much higher. So if we wanted our clearance to match what it was on the rest of the board, we could say the clearance is 0.2 and the minimum width 0.25. And basically, that's the same kind of setup now as we would have had. And now we should see that's on the front side. Let's do the same thing here so we can actually take a look at this. So let's actually take a look at uh, the setting, how the settings have impact this right here. So this is actually the, the spoke clearance as well. Uh, zone outline. So I just moused over anywhere on the, the actual red. And then um, let's do the same thing. So again, watch the watch how it redraws the power plane. Uh, two, five. And these are just set for the default in inches for some reason. Thermal clearance, we'll do 0.2. And then print thermal spoke width. So basically, this should match. And we'll see everything kind of should shrink down. Here we go. Oh. Spoke relief must be greater than the minimum width. Minimum width here. Aha. Yep. Mm hmm. Uh, how about that? Thermal, spoke, thermal relief spoke must be greater than the width. I think I would have known that by now. Okay. 
great. <laughs> that kind of was anticlimactic because of how I did that. But these are you know, just Control-Z and Control-Y, uh, which undoes and redoes. There we go. So you see how that kind of shrinks down there. And you could play around with that to see how these things uh, play nicely. I actually usually like a much thicker uh, thermal spoke. So um, I actually went the wrong way there. I should have done it like that. There we go. So a much thicker spoke. Usually that just gives more connection to a pad like that. OK, great. So uh, now we can go and check. Now, again, our design rules are set to be these absolute minimums. Can't, can't be any lower than that. right? So our minimum track width is 0.2. Minimum VSI is at 0 0.4. Let's go into hit run DRC. No errors. Let's go and uh, trigger an error just to say that we've done it. So we're going to mouse over, hit a trace, and actually change it de deliberately to 0.15. And you see how thin that is now. Let's also make this uh, this via much, much smaller. Let's make this 0 0.2 and 0 0.4. Uh, 0 0.3, actually, I think was the minimum. So you see that's, that's really small. Um, now let's run DRC again. Now it says, hey, wait a second, this via is too small, and your track width is too small as well. And you see it's because I uh, I did that. Now I can go and delete all markers just so they don't show up here. Close this. I'm just going to undo the dialog, and then I'm going to run it again. Uh, refill the zones. And we're good. All right. So let's take one more look at our 3D model here. So this is what it all looks like now with all those traces kind of closed in there. We should still be good. Uh, remember, 0.2 millimeters is uh, 0.7. Sorry, 7.87 mils. So we should still be good for um, for sending off to uh, a board house. And so let's go and do that now. We're gonna do that in two ways here. First one is let's go look at uh, this is one of my favorites. It's here in the states. Uh, so for five bucks an inch, square inch, which is about what we did, this is just gonna be a little bit more. Uh, so we can actually go and just drop the files directly on top of this uh, of this uh, directory of this <laughs> what am I saying here of, of the top of this this uh, web web window so here's our, our directory that we had going on and what we need to do is just drop basically the KiCad file so that's the KiCad dot PCB dot KiCad PCB drop it on top of here and a couple other uh, manufacturers are doing this now I'm used to Oshpark doing this but what it should do is it should not only uh, process your files, it also should then show you a uh, preview, which is really, really great. So you can kind of go in and check this. This is just a plugin I have that allows you to mouse over an image and it shows up. It's called Im Images. And so it's nice to be able to, to kind of zoom in a little bit. Same thing here. So that looks like just like the, what we expected. Uh, what they're doing on the back end is they're, they're basically taking the entire KiCad file and then they are generating Gerbers and putting that into their process and they can also do that. And so let's do the same thing for us. We can go and generate Gerbers. So we're going to go to the plot window up here. Plot because Gerbers are an old plotting standard. I'm not really sure why. So we're going to create a Gerber directory here. First thing is we got to go into the directory. Usually I then go, that's just, this is our the library we created, remember, the, for the footprint. So we want to go and create a new folder here. New folder. I just call it Gerbers usually. Select that. It's going to say, hey, do you want to make this a relative path? And I always do. Then it just shows up as, hey, that's just within our project directory. Now there's a Gerber folder. And now what I usually do, so you remember me talking about the values here. I usually turn this off. I don't want to plot the values. Even if we didn't make them invisible, I usually don't plot those on the uh, silk screen. So even if they're there, I don't, I don't show them. And then these are the layers that we want to plot. So this is top copper, bottom copper. We looked at those. Top paste, bottom paste, that's kind of optional, actually. Uh, if you're going to be using solder paste, which I do recommend, uh, you can get a solder paste stencil from Osh Stencil or one of the PCB manufacturers. So I do recommend you, you make these, but you don't have to use it. Top and bottom silk screen, that's the white lettering that we put on there. Uh, top and bottom mask, that is actually the, uh, that is the opening. So basically, there, even though there's, so there's copper running from here to here, right? But only this part is actually open to the air, right? The copper is actually exposed and then it gets plated. And so that's what the mask file is going to be for. Edge cuts is actually the outside of the, um, the outside dimension, basically what's going to say how, how big our board should be. And then we're good to go. So uh, let's go and hit plot. That's going to, you see, it's gone and created all of these Gerbers. Then we're going to say generate drill file. I actually usually say, I usually merge PTH and NPTH in a single file. It actually doesn't matter for here. We don't have any NPTH, which is non-plated through hole. So that's if you just have like a mechanical hole there. So we only have plated through holes or vias in, in this case. And so we're going to put it all here, leave everything else uh, default. Generate drill file. 
Okay. And now we can go and check this uh, with our with our, pro our, our own uh, thing here, this Gerber viewer. And so this is in the launcher again. Uh, yeah, sure, we'll enable it acceleration. You can tell this is a newer install of KiCad for me. All right, so now we want to go and open a project directory here. We see we're in the Gerber's file. I'm going to go and select all of these. And then I'm going to select the I'm going to select the drill file as well. And now you see, oh, this is just the back copper. What happened? Well, it's just kind of, you don't really have choice on what's in what order. I'm going to turn off the, uh, this is the, the, some of the labeling for these different pads and stuff here. So you don't really have a choice for the order, but you do have a choice for which one you want to look at at a time. So this one is the backside paste. This is the backside mask. Like I said, we're going to have lots of copper on the backside, but only the blue parts are going to be open in the air. There's the backside silk screen. Here's the edge cuts. You're kind of hard to see. Uh, if we want to change the color here, we can middle click again, make it much much lighter. A little bit easier to see. Red's never a great color for that. Make this a little bigger. All right. And then let's keep going down here. Uh, let's look at the front side copper. This is the front side mask. And again, this is kind of showing that difference between the front side copper and front side mask there. And I think, is it possible to... It used to be a way to change the order here, but like I said, I'm just usually clicking through and uh, and kind of looking to making sure the, the 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 layer looks okay to me. So that all looks good. The paste and the mask usually are pretty similar, pretty similar sizes there. This is the front side silk screen, and then finally this is the drills. And we see we only have a couple of drills. They're just for the uh, the vias that we put there. So they're just going to drill out the boards in a couple places. Now, if we want to, what we can do is oh, where did my directory go? So now we have the Gerbers here. Uh, let's go and uh, send to a compressed zip folder. So we'll call it uh, gtb50.zip, right? And now this would be another way. So if we go back to Oshpark, we should also be able to drag this on top of here. And we should get the same result. While that's processing, I'll say there's another place you can go to look for, um, you know, as your boards start to get bigger. Oshpark's really great for when you're getting started and making um, boards like this. As I started to, you know, add other things to my boards and make, you know, higher layer count boards, this is definitely, uh, uh, they can go up quite a bit uh, and get much, much crazier. This is what I do professionally. Um, but for all these things, um, uh, you might want to use something like PCB Shop. You can kind of compare and contrast a lot of the different, uh, you see all these different uh, board houses out there. And um, you know it's 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 good to have choice in the marketplace. Like I said, I'm a big fan of Oshpark, but uh, I have started using PCB Shopper as well, and I think that that's a uh, you know a good way to kind of compare and contrast what's out there. So wanted to make sure we do both of that. So uh, we have our board here, right? You can basically uh, put it in to Oshpark, and you can add descriptions. Oh, you have to add an email address. I'm not going to do that here, but basically it's just go through, and now it's just a purchase process. It's like I said, this is going to be 7.45 for this board because it's not quite a one square inch, uh, but that actually includes shipping for three boards, so pretty good deal there. Um, it's just that battery holder. Man, that thing's a little too big for us. I guess I could have gone diagonal, but uh, yeah, whatever. All right, so uh, I hope you enjoyed this. This is getting Blinky 5.0. We now have made a PCB. It should be shipping off to get processed. Uh, other things you need to do is go and order parts and then uh, assemble the whole thing. And so we have uh, past videos about that. I'll probably try and make another video about that, just how to order parts. Um, you know, there's DigiKey, Mauser, Arrow, a lot of a lot of different places out there you can buy the components you might need. And uh, we'll talk about all that stuff. We might do a little bit of, uh, in the past, get, getting to Blinky 4.0, we also did simulation and stuff like that. But um, uh, yeah, you've made a PCB, so that's pretty exciting. Uh, you're gonna have to wait uh, a couple uh, days, weeks, uh, in order to get it back. But in that time, you have you can go and work on another PCB. You can go and uh, you can go and watch other videos on Contextual Electronics. I don't know, sign up for the course, whatever you'd like to do. Uh, but uh, definitely get some parts and get your soldering ready as well. So if you want to learn more about electronics, you can always go over to contextualelectronics.com. If you want to talk about this video, go over to forum.contextualelectronics.com, and uh, you can always uh, ask questions on in the YouTube comments down below as well. That's all for now. Thanks for watching this series. I really appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed it, and uh, thanks to all the KiCad developers for their continued great work with uh, KiCad. Uh, I'm really excited to make getting to Blinky 6.0, which should be coming out in about a year, year or two. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.